not really knowing what happened to your character after that point. I think I know. We died. <laughs> But the thing was, is that we got canceled by surprise. Yeah. This is what really happened. <laughs> they had gotten, they, they, they thought they were getting canceled uh, in the year before I came on the show. And uh, Joss had to tell his crew late in the year, sorry, I don't have a series for you next year. And he felt really guilty about that. Uh, then I come on the show and we didn't, they, they, they got, you know, revived. And the, the numbers went up by like a lot. So that Joss, he gets his big old pants on, and he goes to the network in the middle of in the middle of my season. He goes, "We canceled now." And they go, "Well, actually, um, we're doing a Dracula treatment, and if that is, works out, yeah, we're going to cancel you. But we don't know yet." And he's like, "Tell me now. Look at my numbers and tell me I'm canceled." And they're like, "Well, it's the producer of uh, uh, ER that's doing uh, Dracula, so." You're canceled, if we have to tell you now. So, he didn't save any money for a big blowout. He really wasn't expecting to have to do that. And he needed to find some way, thematically, to make a big statement and try to send the series out on a high note, thematically. And I think being that the series is about regret, then, then it has to end on doing something that you're very proud of. And basically, we were, we were out there in the alley, and we basically, we knew that we were all toast, but we were going to try. And so I think we all died that part. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 
Yes, green. Man, it's green, right? Lime, green, you. <laughs> is that green? Is that, is that a... It's a Oh, it's Kay Henry. In your last test career, what was the one project that you passed on that in hindsight you wish you really had? I haven't passed on anything. I got I, mean, I, I, I like to keep my clothes on. I got it. <laughs> there, was a, there was a job I quit that I wish I had quit. Um, I was working for Jerry Bruckheimer on, on a cop show. Anthony LaPaglia was a, without a trace, right? And they were paying me dirt, just nothing. And my, my manager was like, take the money. If you get anything more, take that. And I didn't really realize that they, they flew the whole company to New York, not the whole company, but a, a large section of us to New York just to fly me in on a helicopter, just for the one couple of shots to get me onto the show. And I should have like thought, wait a minute, this, this, that's building the character really quite well. Uh, and they probably have a, you know, they probably have plans for me for like next season. You know, they're just trying me out. Uh, but then I got a three picture deal for, for 20th Century Fox to do Dragon Ball, and they were, that was good money, so I just left at that. And I was this close to sitting in a cop car, eating donuts, <laughs> talking about other people's problems. Because when you play a cop, it's like donuts in the car, get out, talk to the shopkeeper, come back in the car, it's easy money. <laughs> and then I get, out, I get out to the desert of Durango, Mexico, and I find out I don't have a stuntman. Oh. And I'm just like, I should have been a cop! <laughs> Oh yeah, I'd probably still be still be munching donuts. I did the last episode ever of uh, Without a Trace. Yeah? Uh, did they mention me? Hey. <laughs> it's one of those things that was really sad because everyone knew that it wasn't going to come back, mm -hmm. but they hadn't been officially told. Uh, and I, you know, I, I, you know, I've been fortunate enough to, you know, with Buffy, we just kind of, we kind of quit, so, so we knew. But it's kind of like everyone's like, all right, so I'll see, you. see you next year. You know what I mean? I think you guys are going to see you. <laughs> You're gonna find out if you really like each other now. Yeah. Hey, little guy, my microphone. Yes. <laughs> okay, this is a question for both of you. Do you wear the cheese, or does the cheese wear? The cheese? They weren't going to kill me off. They started undercutting the character just so that I could fit into the show. And I was, I got to the point where I was like, okay, you can write anything you want for me to do. You can make me say anything. You can make me do anything that you want. But how the audience reacts to me, that's my department. So I decided that I had a soul. I didn't tell Joss about it. But I was like, <laughs> I'm playing this character like I got full of soul. I eat soul food, listen to soul music. I got and so when he said, you're going to get a soul, I'm like, oh no, what am I doing now? I have 
have no idea how I'm going to change the character. With re with reference to going through all the, you know, uh, all the horror of like, uh, in my mind, Spike was getting revisited by all of his victims, and they were all telling them exactly what he took from them, right? Uh, so I was for months on end beating myself up with everything that I felt guilty about as a human being, and I was slowly going crazy, frankly. It was, it was not very good. I was like going around here. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was messed up. It would have been funny though if, if, if. Larry. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> but if you had played it where when you got your soul, you acted like you didn't have a soul anymore and you told Josh, said, well, I've been playing it like I had a soul, so now I got a soul. So 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 I got a soul. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to hate me, but we are out of time. <laughs> Unless you want to ask him to do the Snoopy dance up there. Ladies and gentlemen, let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it.